Thank you. Oh, it's great to be here. Uh, you look like a great group of scientists, and I am delighted to be here with you. Uh, as you've heard, uh, I've had a checkered or varied career uh, as a scientist, as a, uh, an expert in the U.S. State Department, uh, helping to run a major national lab, and then for 16 years as a member of Congress. Um, I taught at all levels uh, along the way, and I still try to teach. And in fact, uh, I run into problems right now that I would say our society is moving away from science. And it's up to us to help bring them back for all sorts of reasons. And you can do it. You know, people ask, well, what do you do with a science degree? What can you be with a science degree? Well, with an undergraduate degree, a bachelor's degree, there's a lot you can do. Even more with a master's degree. More still with a PhD. Now, it used to be, in my mother's day, 80 years ago, she went to graduate school in biology and it was very much a white male world. Uh, she joined the AAAS, the American Association for the Advancement of Science. It gave her validation and support. She went to the annual meeting. She felt like a scientist. That was really important to her. And it, I wasn't there at the time, of course. <laughs> Uh, I came along many years later, but I came to appreciate what an organization can do for an individual. Now, SACNES, SACNES is a fine organization that AAAS is pleased to be associated with, I'm pleased to be associated with, because SACNES says, no one can tell you that you can't do what you want in science. No one can tell you the door is closed. You know, Sockness also says there is no such thing as an ordinary scientist. Every scientist is extraordinary, but in a different way. And that difference, that diversity, is important to defend to promote, not just, not just for the sake of individual fairness and fulfillment, but for the advancement of science. I left Congress at the beginning of this year. I, after 16 years, I announced I wasn't going to stand for another term. I had had a number of challenging elections, but it wasn't that that led me to step aside. It was just time. 16 years is a long time in public service, and I wanted to reconnect with science. Uh, you know, the House of Representatives is not what you would call a science-friendly establishment. Um, and I was fortunate to connect with this organization that I'd been a member for for decades, but hadn't been active in in the whole time I was in Congress, although I certainly interacted with them because they were advocating for science, good science in public policy. And I certainly, as a public servant, was trying to get good science uh, supported by the government, educational programs, science research funding, and so forth. And I went a few months ago, about six or eight months ago now, to be the CEO of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. This organization that had, as I say, back in the 1930s, given my mother support to be a scientist when there weren't many people like her. Because AAAS has understood for more than a century that to advance science, you have to look beyond the individual discipline. You have to look sometimes beyond the individual scientist to promote 
good principles of integrity in science, um, diversity and excellence in the workforce, um, to promote ideas of good science in society and in public policy. And AAAS has a, a, a large array of uh, programs in all of these areas. We're the world's largest general science membership organization. And advancement of science is our, is our name. So we go back to the founding. We were present at the creation of SACNES. Uh, diversity enhancement and advancement is in our DNA. And we, uh, every year, are involved in the SACNES Leadership Institute. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, um, and with this organization and other organizations and universities and colleges, uh, we have programs to promote women in science, to promote uh, people with disabilities in science. Um, we have educational programs at the undergraduate and the graduate level. We work on curriculum development in the pre-college years and, and uh, teacher professional development and training courses in communication skills. Uh, there are a number of things we do to help graduate students beyond their specific research, to help them communicate, uh, to help them uh, prepare for interviews. Some of the same things that have been going on in workshops yesterday and today here. We have programs, webinars uh, for uh, uh, interview preparation, or for presenting your work, or for using the latest technology and imaging in biology. We have, uh, we host the, the My IDP program. If you're involved in an NSF grant, you probably know that uh, your mentor, your PI, is responsible for seeing that you develop a career plan that will help you advance, and most importantly, help him or her help you advance. The My, my IDP program, I think, is uh, individual development plan, is really a nice thing that, uh, that AAAS does. We have the S&T Policy Fellowship Program. Mid-career, early career, even late career, PhDs placed in government agencies, all three branches of the government. We have uh, this year, 280 such policy fellows pace, uh, placed in various departments of the federal government. They help bring technical expertise, badly needed technical expertise, to government agencies. It also brings political savvy back to the professions because the biological sciences, the physical sciences, the earth sciences, all the sciences need to understand more about politics. Because you should be using, engaging in, participating in the political process. Partly because you as evidence thinking trained people can add a lot to that process but also because through that process, your future opportunities are expanded or limited. And so we try to engage scientists and help them learn how to engage uh, in public policy. Uh, we don't have many in elected office. I'm a rarity, but I'm here to tell you, you can do it. People say, well, how did you run for Congress? Well, you, you go down and get this form where you say, I am a candidate for Congress, and you sign it. And then you go out and ask everybody you know for support, not just money, but organizing, 
Ask them to ask everybody they know to help you do it. And continue to talk about the evidence. And that's the final point I want to make. When I said, what can you be with a science degree? And I said, there's no limit nowadays to what you can be. It is because you've been trained to deal with, to live with, to have a reverence for evidence. And that is so lacking in society today. So you have the opportunity to teach, to practice that, and you have the obligation to teach that. What is lacking, I would argue, in our political debates, not just in Congress, but on the street corner and in the city hall, is a reverence for evidence. And that's, I believe, if you're a scientist worth your snuff, that's what you're developing. You may have already developed it. And it is invaluable. You know, when we've got a society right now where millions of people are denying climate change when the evidence is right in front of them. We have millions of people denying their kids vaccination. And millions more are saying, well, that's OK if that's what they want to do. We have millions of high school students not getting sufficient education in evolution. And we have just about every single economic debate here in Washington and around the country conducted on the basis of ideology, not evidence. They don't, you know, it's hard to find anybody who thinks that economics is and should be an empirical science based on evidence. If we could only get people to think more about evidence, a lot of these things that I'm referring to that represent an erosion in the appreciation of science and lots of bad decisions in life and government would be greatly ameliorated, would probably be corrected you've learned to think like a scientist. And you have a great opportunity. A moment ago I said obligation, but it actually can be an opportunity to help others develop a respect for evidence. Tell them if they want to be on the winning side of any issue, of any societal argument. Tell them, side with the evidence, because eventually that's the winning side. Tell them, challenge them when you see them substituting ideology and assertions for evidence. Challenge them to tell you, well, what's the evidence for what you've just said? and challenge the public officials that you encounter. Well, what's the evidence for this policy that you're advocating? We can turn this around, but we need everybody who understands the idea of evidence, the idea of science, to engage in this. So, that's my challenge to you. It's a wonderful opportunity. We can help you from AAAS. We can help you advance your career. We can help you advance the idea of science in society, science in policy, science in people's lives for the benefit of their lives. So sign up for AAAS. Stay connected with AAAS. Recognize that SACNAS is an affiliate of AAAS. Get involved. Sell the idea of evidence-based thinking.